So we've got the budget down. I want to talk about some budgeting do's and don'ts because I'm sure in your day, uh, you've probably made some mistakes. You've probably Mm -hmm. seen some mistakes get made when it comes to finances. Mm -hmm. What are some of the don'ts? Let's start with the negative side so we can end on a happy note here. (laughs) What are some of the don'ts when it comes to budgeting? I think one of the things that I see companies fall into uh, is they make these wild assumptions on what the future looks like. And they do it in such a way that it makes the the rearview mirror look like, oh, that was just an anomaly. We're going to be way better than that in the future. And they build all these plans out. They hire extra people or they make investments and stuff only to find out that that stuff that they thought was going to happen didn't happen. And so you got to plan for um, what if we, our plans that we have don't work out. So, that's, it sounds kind of negative, and, it, and it's intended to be that. Make sure that what you're doing is realistic. Don't go out there and throw these um, these uh, expectations on your business that you only really have a realistic chance of hitting maybe once out of every 10 years. Um, if, you, if you do that, you can end up um, hiring more people than you can really afford, and you end up then having to lay people off, and nobody wants to do that. No. Or you have to end up writing off or selling a piece of equipment that you bought that your business really couldn't uh, couldn't sustain absent those high-flying assumptions coming true. So don't do that. So it sounds like there's kind of a a fiscally conservative approach here of saying like, hey, we can dream big. How do you balance this? You know, we have a lot of BHAGs around here, Mm -hmm. big, hairy, audacious goals. And Dave says, hey, your your business is going to hit this number next month. And they go, oh, my gosh, how are we going to do that? And then they go figure it out. And you go, see? I knew you could do it. That That's one side. But then the other side you're saying is we also have to be very realistic. So yep. how do the two kind of marry each other to where you're not a negative Nelly over here, but you're also not too far in the future where you go, I thought this was going to be the case and it didn't pan out? And I think the basics of your budgeting have to be centered on some sort of goals. What is my goals for growth in the next X number of months or years, whatever it may be? And am I making progress toward that? Um in the past, we have used um, about a 70% chance of hitting a budget, being a good barometer, 60 to 70%, meaning I'm 60 to 70% confident that we will hit that number pretty regularly. Um, going above that, if you go like 80 to 90, then you're probably not stretching yourself much. If you go way below that, then you've probably got something that nobody's going to believe in. They're always going to go, oh, that's great. He thinks we're going to do that, but we're never going to hit that. So getting somewhere in the middle there, above 50%, you don't want it to be a coin flip, Yeah. Um, but you want, it to, you want to be confident. That way you exude that confidence to your employees, um, but it also gives you a little bit of a challenge. It's not, it's not a layup for you. So that's the way I would say we would balance it out. You want to be a little bit beyond your skis when it comes to the goal. Yeah. It should be a little bit uncomfortable. But you don't want to be too far. Yeah, exactly. that's, that's really good. Now, uh, any other don'ts we need to worry about when it comes to these finance faux pas? Don't worry. Uh, don't forget about taxes. I mentioned that earlier. Uh, we don't want to forget about taxes. You definitely have to plan for taxes because the government's going to ask for their share. So we ha- here have to do that uh, with uh, taxes here, just like all businesses do. We're a, uh, a LLC, and so we we have to set aside money for taxes just like everybody else does. And we use this this same process that I'm describing. We set budgets. We do forecasts on what we think that's going to end up looking like. And based upon those numbers, we have to set aside a certain percentage of that for taxes, and we build that into our cash flow budgets. So, Well, let's go positive now. Okay. Uh, there, we got a saying around here. We hear it every month from our CFO, <laughs> Mark Floyd. He says that profits are created. When revenues go up and expenses go down. And then he reminds us that we're all self-employed. We've got a self-employed mentality around here. So what are some ways that the business owners listening can go, hey, what are those costs I can cut? And where are the opportunities for growth in my revenue? I alluded to this a little bit earlier, but the way I like to look at it, George, is what are those expenses that I have that are the have-to-haves versus the nice-to-haves? What are those things that if I don't spend this money, my customers are going to feel it? And they're going to give me feedback on that. Um, if, if it's not if if it's not a, an expenditure that is helping my customer or making the product that I'm delivering better, then it needs to be supporting someone who is doing that. And if it's not in there, then it's on the table to be cut. It's a it's more of a nice to have versus a have to have. And so uh, that's something I think that uh, we preach here. Um, you also want to be mindful of. Um, some people, I know small business owners will take and they'll say, well, I'm not going to fix this truck this month. I can go another month. I'm not going to uh, do the maintenance on it that's required. It's just, it's just too expensive. When you defer stuff like that uh, versus going ahead and biting the bullet and doing it on a regular routine basis, um, 
you're, you're going to end up saving money in the long run. Because if you defer it and you don't spend it now, the cost of replacing it down the road is going to be way higher than mm. it is today. So go ahead and use today's dollars and bite the bullet. Um, but you got to balance all that with, with cash flow. What is my cash position today? Can I afford to do this? If I don't do it now, um, am I going to end up being able to pay 10 times that number down the road to, to replace that piece of equipment? Uh, or am I going to have to replace it earlier than I would have if I had maintained it? So those are some things I think that proactively, if uh, if business owners do that, they'll, they'll in the long run, see their cash flow be uh, much better. Yeah, it reminds me of... Uh getting the cavity filled instead <laughs> of waiting and saying, I'll get that down the line. And then it turns into a root canal. Mm, yeah, and then exactly. It, it's 10 times the cost. So yes. that's that's my analogy to put the cookies on the bottom shelf. I like that. That's so I can helpful. understand this like stuff. That. You know, that's you talk good. about deferred expenses and retained earnings <laughs> and my, my head explodes. Yes. So uh, are there any other areas that maybe an example that we've cut a cost when we went, hey, who knew? We saved $100,000 by, you know, switching the coffee at the coffee bar. We like our coffee around here. Are there any examples like that that you can go, hey, if you're a business owner out there, think about these things that you may not be thinking about? Um, I think that uh, one of the things that would come to mind on uh, on that question is things like that you, you just described coffee. I mean, it's uh, I've seen companies do uh, that or they, they decide, hey, you know, we can save money if we use this uh, quality of product versus this better quality of product that our customers have come to expect. We can save a few pennies a pound if we do this. Well, they do that, and they lose customers because the customers could tell the difference. And if you do those things that are customer-facing, if you try to save money on those things that are customer-facing without spending a lot of time, effort, and energy in knowing what your customers think about that, um, if you don't do that math and do that work up front, you can really hurt yourself because if you uh, if you allow the customer to go look for it somewhere else, they're going to stay gone for a long time. It's really, really hard to get them back once they leave. Another example is on commissions. I've seen people go, well, you know, if we just we cut this commissions plan uh, and instead of it being 10% of sales and we make it 5% of sales and we raise their salary to make up the difference, that sounds great. But a lot of times you find that they're no longer hungry. Mm. They're longer out. They're no, no longer. They're paid whether they go out and raise the sales or if they don't. Now, um, you have to be careful of that. You got to keep that balanced, and uh, and just be always be mindful of what are those things that are customer facing, and how can you um, continue to give uh, the customers the value that they desire. Yeah. Uh, an example that I feel like should be in the never column is going to the one ply toilet paper <laughs> to save some money because you got to think about the team too. And this but is you use twice as much, don't you? That's the truth. That's that's that's. I you're think not that's, saving anything. No, not at all. You think you are, but you go through more rolls. But you're talking about the customer experience and making sure that we don't skimp uh, and then hurt the customer experience. But there's also an element of team morale and team yeah. culture, and we spend a lot of money to keep the team happy. Yeah, we do. Uh, we do a lot of things here that I've never seen done anywhere else. Um, and they're, they're all done for the purpose of making sure that our team members know how much uh, they're cared for, how much their lives matter, their families matter. Um, and those are investments that will pay dividends forever. I think we see it in our, our, turn, our turnover rates. I think we see it in uh, the morale that we see, the team, uh, um, the way the teams interact with each other. It's just awesome and uh, because they know they can't get this anywhere else. 